What's up everybody, Kier Gomes here and welcome back. So if you're a cardist or a card collector or a magician, or a poker player, anybody who handles cards, you know how difficult it is to pick a top five favorite decks of all time. Now, if you've been subscribed to my channel for a while, there have been a few times that I've done my top five favorite decks at the moment. I tend to do one at this point like every six months. I think it's been more than six months since the last time I did this. So I thought today I'd update you on my top five favorite decks of playing cards at the moment. I say at the moment because it does change all the time. Right now I'm gonna let you in on what five decks I can't put down. Before we get started, please do drop a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. Without further ado, let's roll that intro and get you guys on your way. Let's go. Now another thing to mention before we get started, I know that uh, people's top fives are chosen for various reasons. For me, there's really three categories that I judge playing cards based off of. There's the obvious one, which is the aesthetic of the deck, the handling, so the stock and finish is super important, and the third thing is pricing and or availability. So if it's a super, super expensive deck, uh, one that I would only buy one time or that I can't afford to buy a brick of, then it may not make the list. Now I'm gonna go in descending order, so we're gonna start with number five, which is the least favorite of my favorites. Here we go. Number five, the Maroon Antlers by Dan and Dave. I love Dan and Dave. I always have, I've always appreciated their decks. Because I'm a magician and not necessarily a cardist or a card flourisher, Decks that I can use for performance or just for performing magic are very important. And this deck, in my opinion, is the best for that. I have reviewed this deck already on my channel. I will link it below if you're interested in it. Really, this deck checks all the boxes. It has a beautiful, detailed back design, but looks like a standard deck of cards. Semi-standard faces, but just with enough flair, handles like a dream. These cards feel so good and they last a really long time. So that's number five. Coming in at number four, we have the Division playing cards by Murphy's Magic. Honestly, I pretty much love everything about this deck. I have reviewed it on the channel before. Again, I'll link all the reviews I've done for these down below. This deck is printed by the United States Playing Card Company. It has an amazing, amazing back design with some really nice colors in there. I also love that it does have standard faces, but the black pips have been swapped for blue and the red ones have been swapped for pink or peach. Really, really aesthetically pleasing deck. This, uh, I would say, represents um, most of my favorite colors all in one. And that was number four. Number three, we have the Hand Shields Modern Edition by Anthony Chen Hutt. I'm pretty sure I'm saying that right. This dude is super underrated. He is a magician slash cardist, mostly a cardist. He's released two decks of cards. He has the Hand Shields Modern Edition, which is one of my favorites. And he has the Hand Shields Jeans Edition, which uh, is basically like, they look like Knox kind of, but just with like a denim design on the back. Those are great too. I have them around here somewhere, love them. But these, this is just class in a deck. These cards are printed by the USPCC, so they handle great. They have an amazing cream colored back design, that maroon double border uh, with some blue accents in there. This is just overall a classy deck. Uh, I love the standard faces. These are all bicycle standard. There has been some color customization on the courts, which doesn't bother me. Whether you're flourishing or doing magic, this is just a deck that you could carry around all day and be totally happy with what you have actually haven't done an in-depth review of these yet, so if you're interested in that, let me know. And that was number three. Number two, you probably knew it was coming. I'm cheating a little bit because I'm putting the Orbit 5th edition and the Orbit 6th edition as my number two. Because the cards are from the same brand, they're on the same stock, they check most of the same boxes. The only difference is the aesthetic, which really is just a change in color and some slight variations. At the trailer at the beginning of the video, I used the V5. The V6 is probably my favorite Orbit deck right now. I really love the navy blue and green back design. They feel really good. They're on like a crushed V stock. I don't know what this finish is, but it doesn't feel like regular uh, B stock. It, it, they almost clump a little bit and then they don't. So those were the orbits. Before we get into number one at the moment, I do have a few honorable mentions. My first 
first honorable mention is the Juggler Marble Edition playing cards by Hanson Chien. I don't know how this didn't make my top five, probably just because of the availability. This is a rather expensive deck. This is what the back design looks like. I have reviewed these cards on the 52 Wonders channel. If you're new to my channel, um, I do deck reviews and tutorials for a company called 52 Wonders. They are my sponsor and I love everything about that company. The pips are bicycle standard, but they do have some marbling in each of them. And the courts again have some marbled pips with color customization, but I think it looks really good. My favorite thing about this deck actually is the stock and finish. So. These are printed by, I believe, the Legends Playing Card Company in Taiwan. Very similar to Expert, but the only difference is they're five times softer. They feel a lot like crushed USPCC stock, but they last forever. They have put this deck through hell and back, and it still fans like a champion. Uh, it handles amazing. This is actually, uh, I would say, other than Cartamundi's True Linen B9, this is probably, for me, uh, the preferred card stock. If I could have all my cards, uh, printed on this stock, I wouldn't even complain. My next honorable mention is the Superfly Stingray playing cards by Gemini. I also haven't reviewed this deck and I don't know why. Let me know if you want me to because I would definitely be down. They look great in a the fan. They're printed by the USPCC on bicycle stock. So they feel great. And as far as the aesthetic, it really doesn't get much better than that. It's nice and simple, but still super, super sexy. Honorable mention number three is gonna be the Mint deck. Not specifically the V1 or the V2. I'm holding the V2. These are the Blueberry Mint. A lot of you haven't got yours yet, so I don't wanna rub it in, but look how good these cards look. Ooh. Now these didn't make the grade because of the availability. Usually anything that goes through Kickstarter, uh, you know, it, it sells out quick. It's usually like a one and done type thing. I have the V1s and the V2s of the Mint decks and I love them. They are great cards. All right, and let's take a look at my number one favorite deck of cards at the moment. It is the Gemini Casino playing cards by Gemini Dex. These cards come in a bunch of different colors. You got blue, red, orange, and black. They also have a uh, baby blue collector's edition. Wasn't a huge fan of it, so I didn't pick it up. Now I kind of wish I would have, just because I love these cards so much. I would tell you what my favorite of these four is, but it's difficult and here's why. Something genius that Gemini did with these decks is rather than just releasing a deck with a bunch of different colorways, each deck is different. For example, the blue one that I used in the trailer in this video, has uh, super crushed stock. It's very, very thin and snappy cardstock from USPCC, and as well has uh, neon pink or hot pink pips uh, for the hearts and diamonds. The black ones are on that same super thin stock. However, I don't know if you can pick this up on camera, but those pips for the hearts and diamonds are actually orange. And if you know me, you know that black and orange is my favorite color combination. Now I said they were all different and I meant it because the red Gemini casinos are on casino stock, so they're a lot thicker than the other ones, which I actually like. I love casino stock. Um, the Chalkbox V2 was gonna be printed on casino stock. This deck just has completely standard uh, black and red pips and indices. The orange ones are also on casino stock. They feel really, really good. Um, these ones are also just standard on the faces, minus a few color customizations, but very minimal. Okay, now before we move on, I know uh, that I have mentioned in the past that the Red Keepers V2 are my all-time favorite playing cards, and that's still pretty much true. The thing is, those are the cards that I use for almost every single Magic gig that I have. Those are the cards that I play with the most just because they're on the Cartamundi B9 and they look amazing and they feel great and they're marked, which I love. But at the moment, these five decks of cards are just the ones that I'm always grabbing on my way out or the ones that if I'm sitting down and just goofing off, those are the cards that I'm most likely gonna be using. As you can probably see from, uh, from here to my left and then up here behind me, uh, kinda everywhere. Um, I do have a lot of decks of cards, so my top five changes. Literally every every two weeks I've got a different one. It does change all the time. Uh, if you're just looking for some good cards to buy though, I would say the five that I went over with you are really the eight with those honorable mentions. Those are the decks you want. They feel really good. They look great. Um, for those of you that uh, are USPCC junkies, I would actually recommend giving this deck a shot 
if nothing else, just to try out the stock and finish. All right, guys, so that's it. That is my top five. If you're new here, I am currently doing a giveaway for a brick of playing cards. It's right up here behind me. That giveaway ends when I hit 1,000 subscribers here on YouTube. So we're getting close. I don't know how much time you'll have to enter, but I will link the video down below uh, where you can figure out how to win. All that being said, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your weekend. I know I will. <laughs> and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.